video is a rough illustration on how to move around holes or features on a 5-axis program using the G68.2 work coordinate offset tilt translation system. So in this part, we need to move this hole that way. Uh, quality is calling for uh, 9 tenths of a millimeter or maybe a whole millimeter. About a whole millimeter. We're just going to move it like 7 tenths just to be cautious. Um, and then they're moving, they're calling for this one to be moved 9 tenths of a millimeter. We're going to move it about 6 tenths of a millimeter, 7 tenths of a millimeter. Um, we'll, we'll go 6 tenths. 7 tenths on this one, 6 tenths on this one. Uh, this one is, is fairly straightforward, and uh, this one is less so. But uh, let's talk about the coordinate system of the mill for a second. So here's the mill. Now let's talk about the natural coordinate system of the mill. This is X, that is Y, and that is Z. How does that relate to this part? Now the way we get there is we have to put the part in its coordinate system. So we're going to pull up the work coordinate and zero out the A and the C axis. The way that we get the home in the mill position is we start by going to MDI and then we're just going to give it a simple G90, G54.1, P6. That is the work coordinate of this whole program. So that's important. So we start in the work coordinate of the program and whatever the rotation is in that, that's what the system bases itself off of. The thing we care about is uh, A0 and C0 of the block. And so this is going to do a G00 move to this position, which should just bring the whole platter down. And then we can open up the door and talk about coordinate systems. So relative to the part, this is X because the mill, the mill's X is this way, that's Z and this is Y. So if we want to move a hole this way, we move the, the offset to the positive Y and that, that moves its uh, sort of miniature coordinate system shift. Um, same thing goes for, you know, obviously the work coordinate, if you wanted to move the whole machining in one direction, that's how you do it. But what we want to do is move some holes on this face, uphill, and some holes on this face, uh, let's see, is that right? Yes. Um, up. So, this is how we're going to do it. Let me grab the other part. So I've laid this part in the mill in the same way that it uh, is when it's fixtured. And then we've got some notes here. Hey, you need to move this hole this way and uh, this hole that way. Oops, I was backwards when I last told you. So these holes go down. Down is negative Z. And then this hole gets remarkably complicated. Let me show you. I made a little scrap of paper with some drawings on it. If we want to move these holes six tenths of a millimeter down and to the right, we need to move in both X and Z. So we need to move in negative Z and positive X. And then if you find the angle, in this case it's 25 degrees, and you do a little tiny bit of trig, so phi is equal to 25 degrees, sine of phi, which is this surface or this distance here, and or I guess that distance there. So the sine of phi would be this, and uh, the cosine of phi would be this. And then you know the distance you want to move. So you have two unknowns. You get to find out the two, uh, or you have two knowns, and now you can find the two no the unknowns, so to speak. So. Once you know the distance you want to travel, you plug it into this formula, and that tells you your both X and Y position. So that basically the center point of that hole is going to crawl up the surface of the part. You could just move, say, Z, and it would just move it right up, uh, but it wouldn't be right. It would be off, and then 
uh, basically your your uh, offset distance will be off as well. Or you could end up like your uh, we usually use a hundred thou clearance plane. The clearance plane, if you move far enough, will eventually start digging into the part before you even start the hole. So you, it's not really a good practice to do that. Right? So uh, this is the general idea. Um, and then in practice, it looks like this. Right, now I've, I've already made these changes, so we're just going to see what I did but what you need to do is just the same. So, this is the code for the first hole. So this is operation one. Uh, it starts out G54.1P6. Then, um, come down here and it does some movement, gets everything ready. Then this code is the, the uh, coordinate shift system. And this is a G68.2, and uh, and then it's always followed by G53.1, and I'm sorry, I'm no expert in this, but the two of them follow each other, and if you don't have it that way, then it doesn't work well. And then down here, there's a second operation, so second hole. G69 cancels out the G68.2, that's very important. If you delete the G69, it'll act funny and could cause a crash. Now, the thing we care about, is these are all, uh, it's almost like a miniature work coordinate system within the G54.1, X, Y, Z, and it's all X, Y, and Z movements here. What we did was we made this more negative. More negative is down, so we moved this hole further down. That's all we did. And then from where I was before, um, we moved seven tenths of a millimeter. Notice how I've got this commented out. This is the original code that the CAM software spit out. Spit out. Um, so you always have that to reference to without having to go find a backup of your CAM program. Why a bunch of stuff works out just fine and some of the, the other stuff opposite the part has to be adjusted, I don't know. Um, but whatever, it doesn't really make sense because the mill and the software will do it perfectly. But at any rate, then you go through every one of your holes, pay attention to where you're at, uh, pay attention to what number you are putting in and make sure you don't miss a negative or make it 39.77 or 0.3977 because that makes stuff go boom. And then the cruise down to the first hole of, of this part right here. Now this is uh, both a Z and X movement, and um, I have not changed this yet, and I won't do it on the camera, but what you would do is, in this case, from where we're at, we need to move down the wall, which means that we're gonna move in positive X and negative Z. So I would move whatever the trick says, I would move this in the positive direction. So instead of uh, 49, uh, 649, maybe it's uh, 660 or something. And then Z becomes more negative. So maybe it becomes, uh, instead of negative 3.917, it becomes like negative 3930 or something. Everything moves 10 thou or something like that. Now, again, it's not gonna be the same because it's dictated by the sine and the cosine of whatever the, the angle is, right? But uh, that is the general principle. And then, of course, when you make a change, trial it carefully. Just be cautious and go slow, single block it, make sure it's not doing anything stupid. This particular code is broken out into every single hole gets its own coordinate shape, which is both irritating and also convenient. If you have one hole that, for whatever reason, ends up in the wrong place, then you can cherry pick its, its change. But uh, that's usually not the case. Anyway, uh, this is a sort of a convoluted video about how to make these coordinate shift changes in a 5-axis uh, Doosan BVF6500.